Hey, it's Mike here, and today a pretty recent study that looked at nitrates from animal-sourced foods as well as plant-sourced foods. And this is not just a matter of processed meats, adding nitrates, no, they did something unique here, and looked at naturally occurring nitrates in animal-based foods, something that no other study has done. And this is all in the realm of death risk, whether it's from cancer, cardiovascular disease, or overall mortality. So we're gonna look at you know, what foods have these naturally occurring nitrates, whether it's animal or plant-based, how those have a different effect in health, because it's absolutely diametrically opposed in terms of that mortality effect, as you will see. And it's also a really good opportunity to just do a lightning fast recap of nitrates, nitrates, and nitric oxide, because it's so important what's going on in the body here. And just in terms of food sources, this is up there with major nutrients, yet people aren't as aware or familiar with nitrates. And if it's nighttime, feel free to night rate this video with a like, or if it's daytime, you can day rate this as in zero dollars is the day rate to watch this video. So like it as well. I'm gonna stop, let's go. All right, here is the study that we're looking at. It is a Danish study that looked at over 50,000 people and you know, beets are a source of nitrates in plants. And this was not funded by Big Beet. No, it was from the Danish Cancer Society. And I'm not talking about Danish like the pastry. This is from Denmark. And they say, quote, to date, no studies have examined associations between plant and animal source nitrate slash nitrite and mortality. And for simplicity, I probably just put nitrate in the title, but you might've noticed that that said nitrite as well. And so we can just lightning fast do a refresher here. It's really important. So you have nitrates, which is a nitrogen attached to three oxygen, and then that can break down into nitrite, which is nitrogen with two oxygen. You know, all of those details aren't as important important except that nitrite is the one that's closer to nitric oxide. And when you hit nitric oxide, you reach a major fork in the road. And in terms of animal-based nitric oxide from nitrites, we are generally seeing horrible effects, <laughs> negative effects that we will elaborate on more. But then plant-derived nitric oxide has a ton of artery benefits and other benefits as well. So it's a situation where that nitric oxide can either end up turning into actual carcinogenic compounds or something that really helps you. Gotta love the body, gotta love science. We'll hit the mechanisms in a second, but I know you just wanna get to the results of the study and looking at plant nitrates from this cluster of charts, the more of them, the lower the mortality risk, whether we're talking about overall or cardiovascular disease or cancer mortality, more nitrates from plants equals lower. And depending on which mortality metric, we're talking about high versus low consumption resulting in you know 15 to 25% lower mortality, which is quite a bit. And while they play less of a role in plant consumption, they also looked at nitrites particularly, but they say the results were essentially identical, the same lower risk profile. And just a side note here, people always criticize these studies saying, oh, you know, the people that were eating the plants in higher amounts, it was all just healthy user bias. It wasn't the actual plants. Plants are actually trying to kill you as these carnivores say. Uh, but no, they adjusted away a lot of things and we can see different models here. And in fact, it started out in model one, which was age and sex at a 40% lower mortality risk in certain cases, but then they adjusted for a ton of things, exercise, BMI, on and on and on. And it's probably some things they shouldn't have adjusted for. And that result was still about a one fifth lowering in mortality risk, depending on the type. And we're about to get to the animal-based sources of nitrates and nitrites. But first you might just be wondering what plants have all of these nitrates in them and we can just look to this study and its chart and yeah we can see at the top is rocket since this is in the uk and they are referring to arugula as well as the other ones you can just pause to read personally i think rocket is a way cooler name and i will be referring to carrots as spaceship in the future Anyway, moving on to the animal-based sources, starting out with, just because I think it's really interesting, the natural sources of animal-based nitrate and nitrate because I was told, and I feel like most people believe, that they only end up in animal products because they are added as preservatives in processed meat. But here we are talking about naturally occurring, not necessarily processed meat sources. And so I went down a little rabbit hole wondering what is the actual amount of naturally occurring nitrates and nitrites? And I found this study, which compared a ton of foods, quite recent one. And yeah, it is the case that some processed foods like frankfurter or salami might be hanging in at around 50 milligrams per kilogram 
of nitrate. But looking at something like unprocessed red meat or lamb and mutton, those are hanging in at 30 and 45 respectively, quite high. I mean, heck, even some dairy products are quite high. So I feel like I've personally been lied to. And then here's another chart showing nitrite. The numbers are a bit lower across the board, but we're still seeing various meats that are quite high, like randomly unprocessed poultry high. And then of course we do have those classic processed meats and other added sources of nitrate or foods that could have added nitrate as a category. And yeah, it wasn't even that much worse, though it was worse than the naturally occurring nitrate. We have a 19 and 18% increased risk of all-cause mortality and cancer-related mortality for higher amounts versus lower. All right, so the picture's starting to form. If it's plant-based nitrates, it's good. If it's animal-based nitrates, it's bad. But why? How can something that is the same have a totally different effect in different foods? And they have some hypotheses about the mechanisms here, and we have some studies that explore those. And first, let's just look at the ideal situation, the natural positive one where you're eating plant nitrates and they're converting into nitric oxide, and it all starts in the mouth with oral bacteria. We eat nitrates, whether it's from beets or arugula or whatever, and our oral bacteria convert that to nitrite. And then when that makes it into our stomach, we convert that into nitric oxide, which can then make it into our bloodstream if it's not impeded in some way, which we'll get to. And there it can dilate our arteries, help with artery function and have other benefits. And it is the case that taking antimicrobial mouthwashes that just bomb your oral bacteria can actually result in an increase in blood pressure because your arteries aren't able to dilate as much. I have a whole video on that. But yeah, the study says the conversion of vegetable source nitrate to nitric oxide through the enterosalivation very pathway has been demonstrated to reduce blood pressure, improve vascular function, and even enhance physical performance in randomized control trials. But then again, to that fork in the road, we have that other potential pathway where we have some nitric oxide that was formed from these animal products, but we also have these other things, these animal proteins, this heme iron, and this lack of antioxidants there all comes together as well as your gut biome and what's there. All of that contributes to not nitric oxide in the blood doing artery dilation, but the form of literal carcinogenic nitrosamines, nitroso compounds. And yeah, from the lead author in this article, they say that it is the antioxidant compounds in vegetables that push nitrate towards that first beneficial pathway. All right, so now that you hopefully understand the basics of that whole fork in the road, we can ask the question, you know, is this study just finding some association here though? Even from a perspective of thinking that these animal products are not healthy, you might go, oh, well, this naturally occurring nitrate and nitrate could just be an association for overall animal product consumption, perhaps saturated fat consumption, which raises LDL or bad cholesterol, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis. Is it the nitrates? Well, we have one hint from the study that says, yeah, it probably is the nitrates, and that is nitrates in water, in particular drinking water, which I don't believe is associated with uh, saturated fat consumption. And that result is that we also see a similar higher risk of mortality with nitrate consumption in water. And this is really ironic because we're getting nitrates and nitrates from animals which are potentially causing harm, but then also through the farming required to grow animal feed and the fertilizer from that running off, as well as direct manure runoff, that is high in nitrates and goes into the water supply. And then whether you have a well or a water treatment facility that's not removing enough, you can get higher exposure. And I think that with a standard American diet, that nitrate from the water likely has a similar pathway and increases that nitrosamine formation. However, you know, if you're having a lot of antioxidants, I wonder how much it would convert. But it's just another example of how eating animals kind of gets you from two different angles directly from eating those animals in their flesh that can have nitrates, but then also from drinking water that is contaminated due to just the overall farming system of animals as well. However, it is the case that a certain degree of it is just chemical fertilizer. However, in the US at least, where like 90% of soy and the majority of corn is fed to livestock, that absolutely is a footprint of animal product consumption. And another important point in the state of Iowa where I live, which is you know the number one pig farming state we have, 
in Des Moines, they're looking at a plan to spend $50 million to bypass the nitrates that they have to filter out, which is showing how much of a big deal it is. And we're already paying a pretty penny to filter it, and people with rural water are as well. Anyway, in the end here, we have a major biological fork in the road. You can eat the same exact compound, NO3, and it can either become something carcinogenic or become something that could like prevent and slow the formation of plaques and help with heart disease and all of that, which is wild, as well as even just athletic performance. So yeah, plant-based sources decrease mortality and animal-based sources, natural or not, increase mortality from these various risks. Now, whether we're talking about all cause or cancer or cardiovascular disease, they vary depending on which way you're looking at it. But then we also have that just really interesting fact that naturally occurring nitrates and nitrates are in unprocessed meat, an idea that just hasn't sunk in. I was told the opposite. Like even though the WHO deemed red meat that is unprocessed a class two carcinogen, I don't think they mention the naturally occurring nitrates as a part of that, which is interesting. So this is just another way that unprocessed red meat is less healthy than people believe it is. Anyway, I would love to know down below if you guys have any plant-based nitrate hacks. Where are you getting your nitrates? Are you slamming down the arugula, the beet juice? A lot of times you guys have cool nuggets like that to share. So of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.